My name is Lino, and I'm the CEO of Vintages. I've been doing this for over 30 years, and I call what I do as personal winemaking. And we've developed a breakthrough model. I would equate it to something like Starbucks. What Starbucks did for coffee in the 70s, we're going to do for wine in the new millennium. Meaning taking a very old drink and delivering it in a whole new way. Ultimately, we all know we've all been to Starbucks. It's a very much an experience. And when you come to Vintages and see what we do, it's very much an experience. And that's what we're about to scale. We're a retail store, but we're wrapped in a winery. The legal designation is a winery, but ultimately it's a retail selling experience. And this kind of hybrid doesn't exist. So we currently have raised $3 million. Every single dollar is from a customer, and they see the big picture that we have. We have a lot of opportunity to roll out something new and exciting in an old industry that is a lot of me too going on. To me, it's more experiential. I've done it my whole life, and now we're basically going to scale that. You know, we love to deal with, honestly, anybody that loves wine, but I really love the people that are wanting to learn about wine. There's a lot of younger folks, 30-year-old, 40-year-old, let's say, that are a bit intimidated, and this picture kind of tells it all in the sense that he's looking at a label, maybe he's asking the young guy or the young girl there what this wine tastes like, and taste is very subjective is the bottom line. What, my version of a good Cabernet is gonna be a lot different than Jim's version of a Cabernet. And this is where our model strikes at the heart of that. And it is what we call a palate profile. We know that there's science all behind wine tasting on the palate, the bitter, the sour, the sweet. We all know that, but there's an artistry to learning what the customer actually likes. What bitter means to him, what sour means to me, or what sweet means to you. So that is uh, what is developed in our palate profile system. It allows us to learn a lot about you. And this is what is explainable, teachable to a franchisee, because as we scale this, we're going to do company-owned stores and franchises. That is the repeatable and scalable part of what we're doing. This is the heart, ultimately, of what we're doing and what I've done my whole life. It's a wall of barrels, barrel heads, but in behind that wall is not bottles of wine, it's bulk wine. So we don't package the wine for sale to uh, distributors and retail outlets. You come to the location and then we can dial into your tastes and pull the wine out of the bulk quantity and make a blend, or you get to build your wine, and you get to make a blend to your gusto, to your taste, and you have the option to have us bottle it or you bottle it at our location. So the traditional model is what you see. Winery, distributor, and the store. And I'm going to tell you the big driver in this whole picture, in this industry, in the wine industry, is that middle guy, it's the distributor. Wine is sold through a three-tier system. We break through that. That's the big breakthrough of what we're doing. It is a, will be the first vertically integrated production and distribution and selling of wine that can go across state lines without having to go through what I call the gatekeepers, and that's the distributors. In that first, so you can see the, the wine's made, it goes to a distributor, then goes to a store. Well, we ca I call that speculating on inventory. In other words, as a winemaker, you try to figure out, well, what is the customer going to like in the end? And then, of course, you've got to go through the gatekeeper and the other, you know, the retail outlet. But I call it speculative inventory, meaning you're making wine and you're hoping it can be sold. And, of course, hope, how you reduce that hope is spend a lot of money on branding and also uh, marketing. In this picture, what you see really is who's doing the branding, who's doing the marketing, is the people tasting the wine. That is critical to understand in our model. That pull, that happens in the experiential component of our distribution chain. That's the store in the middle. So they're pulling our production as opposed to us pushing our production onto the market. And so I did a phone call today down to a place called the Pinot Brasserie. And Santa Margarita is, one, is a very good brand of Pinot Grigio that I make something very similar to. I buy my grapes from the same area as Santa Margarita in, in Italy. And it's $65 you know, in a restaurant. If you were to buy it at a retail shop, it's $25. At Vintages, you can get it for any, as low as $12.95 a bottle. 
we eliminate a lot of the handling and pass on a lot of price savings. So you get a high quality product the way you like it to taste at a price that is really affordable. It's a $34 billion market. The wine industry in general is. It's going to double. It's doubled in the last 30 years. The next 30 years, it's going to double again. Just based on demographics, this is really straightforward. The US consumption rate is one quarter of the French consumption rate, and you're gonna see a convergence there, and we're gonna be a big part of that. So I have three revenue streams showing here. We actually have more, but as we, so the bricks and mortar is in the center. The buying online is um, something we are developing and what we call a subscription model, and that's what a wine club is. In all of these different revenue streams or ways to buy wine, it's experiential. If, for instance, you're a member of the wine club, the reality is you can customize your purchase every month or every quarter, depending on what cycle you're on, because of our model, meaning that we don't have the wine bottled. It's bottled when you decide, when you want to buy it. We're opening multiple retail operations that are a hybrid, as I explained. This is one to two million per store. We have a lot of gross margin, and that's by virtue of our uh, vertical integrated aspect. We're developing six corporate stores. We're developing internal systems in the short term, and that's what the, the $6 million raises for, and we have franchises that already are in demand. I've got eight memorandum, memorandums of understandings. Thank you very much for having me.